Hey peeps, what's up? Manchi here, back with another video. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can install a Pi hole on a Raspberry Pi. Now, before you ask me, hey Manchi, what is a Pi hole? Well, for starters, this is an open source application or a piece of software which is a DNS sinkhole. So the basic concept is any advertisements which are served to you over the internet, they are served via a specific URL and then this pie hole acts as your dns server and it filters out those urls and does not push them over to the browser so when you're browsing websites if you have a network wide pie hole or for that matter you set up a pie hole on your computer you will fortunately not see any advertisements and all the relevant links which we are using in this video are linked in the description of the video now the pi hole itself supports multiple operating systems so you have your linux based operating systems like ubuntu debian fedora etc but if you want a network wide pi hole for your ad blocking for the internet surfing then the best option in my humble opinion is to get a raspberry pi connected to your router using a lan cable and that is the best pie hole out there and that is what we are going to do in this video now what are the things which you need of course for starters you need a raspberry pi then you need a power cable and an adapter to power the raspberry pi then for your operating system we are going to be installing raspberry pi os onto the micro sd card so you need a minimum 8 gb micro sd card and to install this raspberry pi os onto the raspberry pi we would also need a card reader on your computer or laptop or if it does not have an inbuilt card reader then you can always buy an external card reader along with that you will also need a lan cable which will help you connect the raspberry pi with a pi hole to your router and again links for purchasing all these things can be found in the description of this video so the first thing we need to do is we need to go to the official raspberry pi os website and this here is the website and you need to download the raspberry pi os raspberry pi imager so here it is i am running mac os right now so mac os is highlighted by default you do have this raspberry pi imager available for windows and ubuntu as well and if you are comfortable with terminal you can always use this command at the bottom over here i am going to select download for mac os and this is going to download this imager application and i'm going to say save over here now once we have downloaded this here it is this is the imager on our desktop and we are going to install this and installation is as easy as double clicking on it and then i can drag and drop this raspberry pi imager app into the applications now once that is done i can go to the finder and once i am in finder i can go into the applications section so let me open a folder let us go into applications and herein we should have our raspberry pi imager app we are going to open this it is giving me a warning that it was downloaded from the internet i'm going to say open next thing is you have the option of choosing your operating system now by default this is the one which they recommend this is raspberry pi desktop but because we are running it just for the purpose of a pi hole we can go into raspberry pi other and herein we can choose the light version because we do not need the desktop version we are running a headless raspberry pi is what they call it because there's no keyboard or monitor attached to the raspberry pi now you do need to know whether your raspberry pi supports 64 bit or 32 bit in my case i have the raspberry pi 3b and that is 64 bit support so i'm going to select this raspberry pi os Lite 64 bit and before you ask me hey manji how do i know what raspberry pi os does my raspberry pi support well it is pretty easy you go to the website from wherein we downloaded the raspberry pi imager scroll down and go into the manually install an operating system image 
select see all download options and herein you will see so raspberry pi os compatible with all raspberry pi models similarly your pi os 64 bit is compatible with these models of the raspberry pi and the legacy one again with all so this is how you know what raspberry pi operating system your raspberry pi can support so we're going to select this raspberry pi os light now next thing you choose your storage so this is my micro sd card which i have attached to my computer i'm going to select this now before you select right you need to go into the settings option on the bottom right and it is asking us would you like to pre-fill the wi-fi password from the system keychain in my case i'm going to select no and that is because we are physically connecting the raspberry pi to our router using a lan cable if you want your raspberry pi to connect to your wi-fi network with the wi-fi then you have to select yes over here but i am going to select no now herein two important things you need to check first of all you have to enable ssh and then you have to select use password authentication set username and password let the username be pi and password you have to select whatever you want to for the purpose of this video i am going to be using raspberry because that is what used to be the default password now once you've made these changes that is you have enabled ssh and set up a username and password then we are going to say save another pro tip is you can always set the host name as raspberry pi dot local and this will come in helpful later in the video when we have to find out the ip address of the raspberry pi so these three options have been selected and then we are going to say save and then we are going to say write do note that all the contents on your micro sd card are going to be erased and that is what this warning is about so here then we are going to select yes and it is asking me for my admin username and password type that in and select ok and at this point as you can see it is writing the raspberry pi os to the micro sd card and depending on the speed of your usb port your micro sd card this might take some time so you have to be patient now fun fact for you here is that almost 20 to 30 percent of the content which you see on the internet is advertisements and as you can see on your screen right now the percentage blocked here is 24.1 percent which in my humble opinion is way too much but anyways once the process has finished writing the raspberry pi os to your micro sd card the next thing it is going to do is it is going to verify the installation to make sure there is no corruption now once the verify part has finished you might be on this finalizing screen for some time but pretty soon you're going to get a message that raspberry pi os has been installed onto your micro sd card and now you can remove the sd card from the reader which means you can remove it from your computer as well so we are going to select continue over here and then the next step is to plug in this micro sd card into your raspberry pi make sure you plug in your lan cable the other end is attached to the router and also provide power to your raspberry pi and then wait for around five minutes before you move over to the next step because it takes around five minutes for the raspberry pi to boot up with the raspberry pi os which we have just installed now once you have inserted the micro sd card into the raspberry pi wait it for five minutes and given it power next thing you need to find the ip address of the raspberry pi how do you do that so for mac os we will go into utilities and then we will go into terminal if you have windows then you can open your command prompt and you can also use powershell on windows now once you've opened your terminal or your powershell or your command prompt you need to ping the raspberry pi to find out its ip address so we're going to type in ping raspberry pi dot local and remember this is the name which we had given to it when we were installing raspberry pi os onto our sd card so once you've entered the command press the enter key and bam there it is you can see i now have the ip address of the raspberry pi and 
you can always close your terminal command prompt or just exit it outright to exit this window so on my macbook it was Control c to stop this but the important thing is we now have the ip address of the raspberry pi which is 192.168.1.90 in my case next thing you need to ssh into this raspberry pi so that we can continue with the process of installing the pi holes now if you have terminal which means you have mac or linux you can ssh directly from terminal if you have windows you might have to download an application called putty which will let you ssh into this ip address but in my case i am going to type in the command which is sudo space ssh space pi at the rate of the ip address so pi at the rate whatever ip address we have in my case it is 192.168.1.90 and then press the enter key first of all it is going to ask me a password now this is the password for the admin on my macbook once i press enter it is giving me an error message and this is because this is a known issue with macbooks wherein it remembers the previous pi hole which i had set up the other micro sd card so it thinks there's something bad going on so we are going to fix this as well now to fix this issue all you need to do is regen the ssh keys and the command is on your screen right now change the ip address with whatever ip address you had now once i have entered the command i'm going to press the enter key and it has now updated the keys then the next thing we're going to do is try to ssh into the raspberry pi one more time and it is asking us are you sure you want to connect we are going to type in yes and press the enter key and now it is asking me the password but if you notice i have pi at the rate the ip address so this is the password which we had set up when we were configuring the micro sd card with raspberry pi os and in our case it was raspberry you could have chosen any password when you type in the password it will not be visible all you have to do is press the enter key once you've typed the password and there it is we have successfully connected to our raspberry mm -hmm. pi to do is we need to install the pi hole onto our raspberry Pi. so all you need to do is go to the github page and we are going to select this command copy it go back to our terminal we are already ssh into the raspberry pi and here and we can paste the command which we have just copied and then press the enter key and pretty soon it should start all the checks it has se linux is not detected and now the installation process for the pi hole onto my micro sd card which is on my raspberry pi 3 has started now do note it will take some time for it to update the local cache then it is going to look for upgraded packages you just have to be patient now once that is finished you will land up on a screen like this so here and it is telling me this installer will transform your device into a network wide ad blocker yes that is what we are here for this is the pie hole ok is highlighted and selected press the enter key there it is the pie hole is free but feel free to donate ok one more time now as you can see this is a server so it needs a static ip address so the important thing to note over here is that you might have to go into your router settings and make sure that the ip address is static for your raspberry pi so if you're going to press the left arrow continue is highlighted and selected and press the enter key and there it is you can see that these here are the details if you're satisfied with them you can say yes yes is highlighted and selected so the next thing we are going to do is we are going to press enter key on yes then it is giving us another warning about ip conflict select okay now it is asking us what dns server do you want to use you want to use google you want to use open dns or you want to use anything else feel free to do so by pressing the arrow keys i'm going to leave it as google over here and select okay now do note it does rely on third party lists to block advertisements and this is the default one over here so we're going to say yes press the enter key 
do you want an admin interface yes we want it a web server is required yes over here as well do you want to enable query logging we say yes do you want to hide something hide domains and clients anonymous mode because this is my private pie hole i will say show everything and select continue and there it is now the process has started it will again take some time so you have to be patient now once the process has finished successfully you will land up on a screen like this which says installation complete it gives you your ip address to log into the admin interface for your pie hole along with a password make sure you do note down this password and then we can select ok over here at this point we are back on our terminal now another important thing to note over here is that the default password which you got for your admin interface can be changed using ssh and the command for that is piehole space hyphen a space hyphen p and do note you have to be successfully sshed into your raspberry pi and then we are going to press the enter key and enter our new password once you have entered it once press the enter key and then it will ask you to confirm the password and then once you've entered the password one more time press the enter key we now have confirmation that the new password has been set next thing if you go to your browser and enter that url to access your piehole admin interface you will be greeted with a page like this and herein all you need to do is enter your password and then select login now this is going to make sure that i am on the admin interface and as you can see we have already blocked 6.8 percentage of the advertisements which were being served to us the next thing if you want this pie hole to be network wide you have to go into your router settings and you should know the url to access your router settings in my case if i have to change the dns server for my router i have to go into the router settings go into lan go into dhcp server and herein i have this section wherein i can enter the dns servers similarly you can also go into the wan settings or wan settings and herein you have connect to dns server automatically set this to no and enter your dns server in this case it will be the ip address of the pie hole which we have just set up now before i set my pie hole to be network wide here is how android central looks to me right now the next thing i'm going to do is set up this pie hole on my router and then we can refresh the page all right so i have set up this pie hole which we have just created as the network wide dns server we right now have 305 queries let me go ahead and refresh this and we can go back over here so we have 315 the queries are increasing and there it is we have blocked 93 queries in fact it is increasing as i speak but if i go back to this android central page you can see that these are the placeholders for the advertisements and no advertisements are being loaded so the raspberry pi hole which we set up on our raspberry pi 3 is working as expected